A very good Monday morning to you. You are watching Y254 channel and this is Y in the morning. As you know, this is your favorite breakfast show. We do this every day between Monday and Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. So because it is Monday and it's 8 a.m., it's about that time we talk about governance. We talk about the young people who are trying to spearhead development in this country, only on youth and politics. My name is Hilda Wadidi. Karibuni sana. So on Twitter, if you do want to participate in the conversation at Y254 channel, hashtag Y in the morning, hashtag youth and politics if you like to be more specific on instagram at y254 underscore channel and on to, on on what on youtube at y254 channel please do subscribe in case you miss any of the valuable insight here on dstv we are channel 376 on signet h24 star times 54 so yes today we are going to be talking about out to the old and in with the new these are the words of our governor alfred mutua machakos governor rather meshimiwa well he was trying to bid for presidency come 2022 and he does wish or says that Kenya, Kenya is at a stalemate when it comes to development because of bad governance. I don't know if you think we are correct to say this or he's correct to say this as well, so make sure you do weigh in on the conversation. But with me in studio today, I have our leaders themselves. And you know, in the spirit of our politics, we want to hold them accountable. We have the national youth leaders for very, very big parties here in this country. We do have lawyers in the house. We have student leaders in the house. We have various counties represented. So it's about time I allow them to introduce themselves. Karibuni Sana Studio. Good morning once again. My name is Kevin Kiari, National Youth Leader Jubilee Party and the President of the Forum Youth Initiative. Uh, good morning Kenyans. My name is Apia Apia, the current National Youth, Youth Leader Third Alliance Kenya. We are the champions of this constitutional amendment. Okay. Good morning viewers. My name is Irene Merimo. I'm in charge of the Public Affairs and Communication at the Youth Senate Kenya. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Kenyans. I'm Dominic Oleri Nabuta. I'm the outgoing chair of Parliamentary Youth Delegates. Thank you. Good morning, Kenyans. I'm Mo Chempe, a student leader at UN. Thank you. Good morning, Kenyans. My name is Denny Bokato. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and a political and legal analyst. Uh, good morning, Kenyans. My name is Saratan Leman, a student leader at African Zerun University. Hey, good morning, Kenyans. Uh, my name is Esa Pichiriot. I'm a student at African Eastern University, Aposun uh, Europe. Good morning, Kenyans. My name is uh, Mohamed Mutara Bile. I'm from the first part of Kenya, Wajia County, a youth leader from Wajia, and also a double up of the speaker of Wajia in Kenya. Good morning, viewers. My name is Esa Sarus from Manima County, and I lost to the African Eastern University. At the same time, I'm a I'm a leader in the school and I'm also a politician. A politician? Wow, well, then in the right forum. <laughs> <laughs> We have a look at one a clip where Alfred Mutua was stating that he did wish to become the president come 2022. And just before we delve into the drama that is happening inside the Jubilee party, uh, somebody here is from Baringo. I'm hearing that uh, Tivali, Kanu, and Jubilee are going to front the same candidates come 2022. That is according to your leaders. But it's about time we just hear. Let's just hear what uh, one Alfred Mutua had to say. All right, so I need to give my director some time to get that clip. But uh, Kelvin and Appeal. Oh, wait, let me first start with Appeal because uh, you have the, the, the referendum that you guys are trying to push for. Yeah. How many signatures are you at for Punguza Mizego? So far, we, we presented uh, 1.4 million signatures. 1.4 million? A month ago to wow. the IBC for verifications uh -huh. and ratifications. Uh -huh. And that is what we are waiting. Uh -huh. uh, we had already presented our, 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 our bill. Uh -huh. And uh, I think that uh, after IBC shall have cleared that, then uh, uh, the next course of action will be taking this thing to the counties because we need at least 24 counties, county assemblies, I mean, uh -huh. Uh -huh. to uh, again uh, ratify that. Uh -huh. And then I think we are on the good course. Thank God, it is uh -huh. only third alliance that started uh, the, the, the debate about we need to change our constitution, mm -hmm. it is too much expensive to implement mm -hmm. and to put in place as we stand and it was a burden of the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So, so far so good, we have succeeded in our preliminary steps, mm -hmm. Kenyans have endorsed us, mm -hmm. we have 1.4 million, mm -hmm. they are with the IBC, we are waiting for verifications mm -hmm. and the next course of action will be us 
prescribed by the Constitution of Kenya. It's okay. Wow. <laughs> Waki, would you like to respond to that? Is the Constitution too expensive? Well, uh, it is. Mm -hmm. However, it's quite a rhetoric mm -hmm. listening to third layers mm -hmm. being the ones introducing the amendment. Mm -hmm. Knowing very well it's Dr. Ikuro Kota, a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. who sat in the committee of experts mm -hmm. who came up with this constitution. So, mm -hmm. these are questions that we must ask. Mm -hmm. Why now? Mm -hmm. You know, why now that the constitution has become expensive to run, mm -hmm. whereas he was among the people mm -hmm. who fronted this. Of course, he has given his own defense, mm -hmm. but we still hold account to him. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. it is of import uh, to have a critical look at this constitution. Mm -hmm. A few minutes ago, I was giving my analysis on Mulembe FM mm -hmm. in regards to the constitution. Mm -hmm. Many people voted for this constitution, mm -hmm. not based on what they know. Mm -hmm based on the political affiliation. Mimi ni mtu wa baba, mimi ni mtu wa kibaki, wacha tupitisha, ikatiba. So it's, it's at the correct time mm -hmm. that we really have a critical look at this constitution mm -hmm. and do realize whether it supports the Wanjiko's agenda. All right, yeah. it supports the Wanjiko's agenda. Before all of you comment on it, we must listen to Governor Alfred Mutua first and then you can all, you can all, we can all talk about it just mm -hmm. briefly. run a campaign to teach our people how to choose the right leaders for this country. Not based on tribe, not based on the biggest thief in the room. You get my thinking. Are you with me? Don't you think we run a campaign for the next three years, the 2022 elections will elect better people, are going to make life better for our people. So when you coffee, you're pointing zero. The first president of this country Mze Jomo Kinyata, sorry, Mze Jomo Kinyara, was, was, uh, was imprisoned by the British. He got out of prison. He said he wanted to change Kenya. He became the first president. Pre-independence systems, he fought for independence. The second president of this country, Daniel Arap Moy, served in the Legico, the Legislative Council, the parliament of the colonial era. He was in Lancaster writing the constitution. Pre-independence. The third president of this country, Mwai Kibaki, was the secretary general, the executive secretary of Kau before it became Kamnu, before independence, pre-independence. Ogingo Odinga refused to take up the prime minister position until Kenyatta was freed, pre-independence. We look at everything that we've been doing has been pre-independence. We have a new constitution. President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta is the first president under the new constitution. We've all been putting up a foundation for Kenya. Raila Odinga fought for democracy, changing the constitution and everything, putting foundation. We have put, we've just been laying the foundation. And these are my heroes. Jomo Kenyatta, you know, Gingo Odinga, Daniel Arap Moy, Mwai Kibaki, Pare Pare, they are all my heroes. They have done a great job, but we cannot continue being in a foundation stage forever, my friends. We have transition. These leaders are great. They have put us into the bus. They have taken Kenya to where it is. They have taken us to the airport. But now we need a different type of pilot who is going to fly us to New York City. It can't be the same type of leadership to make this country fly. And I'm not only saying this because I'm running for president in 2022, but, but also because I believe that the change lies in us. That clip, but I wanted you guys to have a listen to what uh, Alfred Mutua said because he said that the leaders that we have now have just taken us to the airport. It's up to us to take the flight and to go towards where it is that we want to go. But before we talk about out with the old and in with the new, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a referendum or, or a proposed referendum here. And I'd like to hear from the young people have you heard about it? Are you among the 1.4 million signatures for Punguza Mizigo for third way? Please, can we hear from you? Oh yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, on the issue of the Kambosa Msiko Memorandum, mm -hmm. what I can say about this is that it's good. 
something good, yes. Mm -hmm. Kindly hold the microphone, but please. It's something good, yes. Mm -hmm. But we have to consider, first mm -hmm. of all, that what is this bungusa mziko? What, mm -hmm. what do we want to bungusa? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot, we cannot just say that we need to bungusa mm -hmm. and then we don't know, we lose the objective of the, our, our, our constitution. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the constitution exists for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And then if we say, right now we need to bungusa the mziko, mm -hmm. at, at, in which sense are we, are we want to bungusa the mziko? You know? You want to so it's, to it's, a, it's yeah, a good question we have to ask ourselves, first mm -hmm. of all, before, Proceeding with the issue of Muslim Sikh. But to Muslim Sikh is, is, is fine. It's fine. I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Let's let, let me hear from Wajir. Wajir Kati, have you guys heard about this? Yes, yes, we have heard about it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but personally, uh, from from the perspective of the Wajir youth who are from there, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Recently in Kenya, mm -hmm. sometimes we can say that we, 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 we're going to have a referendum mm -hmm. that is going to Punguza Mzigo. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, there are some, it's, it's creating some posts for, for the guys who are the top in the government. Mm -hmm. Like if you say we're going to create a post for the prime minister and uh, two deputy prime ministers. Actually, we have the president, the deputy president, the executive, the parliamentarians, we have the senators, we have the governors. That's a lot. I think uh, we need to to come up with a referendum that is going to improve the lives of the young people. Mm -hmm. It's going to improve the lives of the common community. Not only we, we don't have to look at the perspective of where it's going to create positions for for the leaders who who lose in political seats. Mm. Kelvin, do you feel like you want to win yes, on yes. that? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to ask ourselves as a country, mm -hmm. are we yet ripe for a constitutional change? Mm -hmm. Are we yet implemented fully the constitution of Kenya 2010? Mm -hmm. When we voted for that constitution, we were promised and we saw that uh, we revived the, uh, the county government system, which was the Majimbo system back then. Mm -hmm. have, we yet fully, have we yet seen or felt the impact of these county governments in our counties? Has this... Uh, the current leadership we have, have they fully represented us? You, we, we as the youths, are we fully represented? Do we air out our views in parliament? Are we even uh, represented in government? So before we go for a referendum, that's the question we should ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yet, is it right for Kenya for this change? All right, Apio, would you like to comment um, on how, maybe, how the youth are represented maybe, in your maybe, Pumuza Maybe, music? maybe to, to, to respond to some mm -hmm. of the uh, issues raised by Wakili. Yes. That, uh, number one, uh, they're wondering why uh, Dr. Kuro Court mm -hmm. is advocating for a constitutional change, yet he was one of the, I think, the chief expert in the constitution that was implemented or promulgated in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kenyans and anyone who probably have got a knowledge of law knows that uh, constitutional making is a negotiated process. And when we talk of negotiation, that is why it is written in the preamble. Me, I'm not a lawyer by profession. But if you look at the constitution, each constitution, whether organized for organization, for a country, for an NGO, for any form of government. In the preamble, it is written, we, the people. It is not written, I, Dr. Kurokot, or I, the chief expert, or I, the CEO of this constitution. So all of us need to understand that constitution is a negotiated process because there was public participation. There were views from all stakeholders in the societies, from, from, from religion, from uh, civil rights societies, from people in government, from opposition. So it was a negotiated process. Uh, about Punguza Mizigo, what he's saying, it's quite ironical to say that Punguza Mizigo is good, then uh, at the same time you're saying that you, you don't know what what, uh, what what is the content or what you need to Punguza. To mean probably you didn't read our 16 points. Mm -hmm. I think the fundamental argument about Punguza Mizigo was that, number one, Kenyans, we are overrepresented. Mm -hmm. As we speak, both the bicameral, uh, the, 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 the bicameral parliament, both the Senate and uh, the National Assembly, we have 416 members of parliament. And the 416 members of parliament, averagely, the cost of one per month to sustain one member of parliament in Kenya, the country spent one million every month for each member of parliament. So the fundamental of the Punguza Mizigo debate was that, number one, we are overrepresented. We cannot be speaking today that we want to implement a constitution that is already a burden to the society. And that is why we said, I agree with you. 
And I agree with all of you that when people were passing or when the county was passing this constitution, it was so unanimous that people didn't even have this time to read and to understand. But all of us know that the, the current constitution that we are, we are having is one of the most progressive constitution we have in, uh, across the world because we are dedicating the whole of chapter 6 speaking about integrity, uh, 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 what a person is supposed to have for you to, to be in an office or what. So I think any progressive constitution in the country, and Wakili, I think you can confirm this, always you must have a loopholes and always you must have room for development. And that is why after implementing it, whether it has been fully implemented or a half implemented or a quarter implemented, we have realized as a country that this constitution is expensive to implement because we cannot be having 416 members of parliament and if you go to Turkana, if you go to Samburu, if you go to different places of this country, if you look about the youth, the rate of unemployment, and we are spending one million in sustaining one member of parliament. So that is why we came up with the tag Punguze Mizigo. Tunapunguza, number one, we need to, to have a, a manageable number in parliament. Okay, we can go back to the old constitution. Thank all you. right, all right. I think he has given a very good defense. Oh, would you like to respond? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, um, first, three points. First, um, True, we are overrepresented as a country, but um, you see the thing about Kenya, Kenya is a special country when compared to most countries because we have 42 tribes in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, most countries do not have that many ethnic uh, tribes. Mm -hmm. So in as much as we are overrepresented, we really think we, we need to think about uh, satisfying the political tensions in the country. Mm -hmm. If uh, at independence we had 188 uh, members of both parliaments, both houses, we had both houses, but there were 188. And there's an argument that Kenya has not grown in size, so mm -hmm. why should we have more people representing us? Mm -hmm. but the thing that has happened is that our politics has evolved, right? And that uh, if we were to bring, some of these positions have been specifically created so that we can satisfy some, some, some tribes, mm -hmm. uh, if, if I can speak bluntly. And if we were to take away these positions, you see, we would, yes, we would cure the problem of now we are not overly represented, but now we would, we would like a, uh, we would create an, a genesis of a new problem. Mm -hmm. uh, some communities would feel like they are not included in government. So yes, uh, expanding representation, he was this problem that every community now gets a space. We are able to include everyone in government. My second point is that uh, I'm, I'm a very young person. I'm 21 years old. So mm -hmm. um, I've only witnessed one, rep one referendum when I was really young, 2005. My main problem with it is that every time that we have a, rep uh, a referendum, it's not engineered to solve any societal problem. It's not engineered to help the youth. Referendums in Kenya happen when we have political rifts. Uh, and, and I think everyone on set will agree with me. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we need to run away from that mentality and whatever background story is fed to the public, you know, we want a referendum because of this. The underlying principle is that we have political rifts and that's why we have uh, uh, referendums. My final point uh, would be to agree with uh, Bonakere and Wakili that mm -hmm. uh, I've studied constitutional law mm -hmm. and, and, and I can and I can agree that um, when constitutions we, we, we promulgated our constitution only nine years ago. Mm -hmm. I think every constitutional scholar would agree that that is an incredibly short time. Mm -hmm. a anybody saying that you know we need to rethink this constitution has mm -hmm. not really allowed it time to work mm -hmm. I, and, and therefore we cannot like we cannot progress from that from that point of thought. Thank you. Okay, okay. Can we make this quick? Well, we need to move um, on? my thinking concerning the Nguzamzigo issue is mm -hmm. the impact it will have on women being represented in political leadership. Mm -hmm. Because the amendments that Third World Lands have is that there will be scrapping of the women rep positions and the senator. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that we are now retrogressing to a place where women's voices in the national policy making space will be? Uh, removed totally because as at now the reason why we had um, the 47 women reps is to make sure that these people who are never elected on a normal election basis are are represented in policy making so how are we going to ensure that also we maintain that voice of young of women in the national assembly with the reduction in um, members of parliament or senators but in, in our in our in our document we are clear what we're saying is that as we are scrapping off the, the women representative, we want one person elected, a man elected in a county and a woman. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? We have a representative, a woman representative. For in fact, we are speaking about gender balance. Our document speaks about gender balance. Because 
in what we are advocating in our, in our proposal is that as we are doing election to parliament, we need first to elect one person in, in, in the whole county and one woman, one man and one woman. That is what I, I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So we are not scrapping it off. We are bringing gender balance. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, the women in this country should pick that idea as fast as possible because that is the only thing that is going to bring harmony. Okay, enough about third way. Can we now move on? <laughs> yes. Can we now move on when it comes to holding our leaders accountable and also when it comes to creating opportunities for us young people? Um, there were some studies that was done by G-Activate Kenya and um, it asked uh, the young people, how do you cover your daily expenses? Somebody talked about uh, unemployment being part of the issue where we are not even, um, we are not, even if we are represented, we are almost not represented. We are just, we are hovering. Like even lack of information has become quite an issue. And 31% of of our young people say that um, casual labor, imagine, 31% casual labor, 15% small business owner, um, family support, 14% 14, 14 small scale farming, 7%, gambling and betting, 5%. I don't know if my director can show that uh, here. Self employment, 5%. Savings from employment, 5%. Goodness. Informal employment, 5%. Formal employment, 4%. Um, part time employment, 2%. Creative arts and sports, 2%. Borrowing, 1%. Volunteer jobs, 1%. So that is how uh, the young people are in, in our country are surviving. And um, statistics released that um, we have a uh, uh, almost over 20% of our population uh, between the age of 15 and 24 years. I'm seeing even they are well represented. Here, yeah, someone is 21. <laughs> someone is 21, a surprise. <laughs> but anyway, yes. So we want to talk about um, the youth leaders who are representing us, especially Kelvin, the biggest one, Jubilee Party. Yes. We would like to know, what have you been doing when it comes to solving the issue of unemployment amongst the young people? Well, uh, I would like to say that the government is trying. We have now the youth fund and, and the weather fund, and now they are trying to consolidate it to be a shadow fund. What the government has done, it has increased fund, funds to this, to this, to this organization. Now it's upon us as youth to take this opportunity to go out there, because uh, I know even in Baringo, many of the youth there don't know about youth fund uh, and this kind of funds. And Baringo, is that true? <laughs> yes. Mr. Kiare cannot be here putting that. I'm here, but I can confirm it. You are among the few. Yes. Sorry to say, you are among the few who is, no, who is exposed. I can confirm it because as much as we are Jamia of Gaji, but we do understand these things after all because we have gone to school and we know. Yes, okay. You, you have to remember that it is a source of leaders. Yeah, we, we had the first, pre the second president from there. And then, <laughs> whatever you are telling us that, you know about a uh, youth fund, is a lie because at the end of the day, the government is is a fact. Yeah, it's a, the, I can prove it. The government is doing nothing so much about it. You the guys youth, are doing the nothing. Youth leaders, <laughs> the youth leaders who have been elected, who have got a luck, luck, who have been lucky to be in the parliament or executive or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are there, but they say that they, they fear the leaders, I or the they, they they associate with them. Mm -hmm. It's either they fear the leaders, or they associate with them to do up to aid and obey them in 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 abducting their responsibilities. Oh. Because you got you got you got to tell me that. Kelvin, that you, is you, a direct accusation. You, uh, okay. yes. No, so. let him finish. Let him finish. Okay. No, you you cannot tell me that <laughs> the leaders who are youth, twenty one years, twenty four years, twenty five, thirty five, thirty one. And then you, we are still facing the problem we are facing 55 years ago. What is it? And we are in the 21st century. We need to develop a mechanism whereby we cap these challenges in a modern way. But we cannot just be there and instead of, yes, what, what I can say they have done is that they have motivated most of the youth to go for these posts. That's, that's perfect. They have encouraged the youth to be leaders. They have engaged, they have. They have given the youth principles of leadership, but the problem is they have never thought of anything empowering them. That's the problem. Can you can you make a step and what we call, try to come up with policies, formulate policies which will help the youth solve the issue of unemployment, mm -hmm. uh, the issue of drugs and such stuff, and, and education. 
But in terms of motivating, yes, they are well. They are, they are well. So Jubilee is good at motivating. Exactly, yes, that is it. <laughs> well, uh, to, to counter that, I would like to say that if the problem is us as youths. We have not yet risen up to take these funds. And I'm speaking as a matter of fact in the, on the ground. Mm -hmm. Because you find that even in the constituency, most of these funds, they end up being recycled back because we have not yet taken these funds. Why don't we organize ourselves as groups? We take these funds. Let, let us tell the government that there they are no more funds because we have already taken these funds and we are doing business with them. And now we go ahead and ask the government now, what are you guys doing to make sure that we have safe spaces for businesses? Okay. Instead of us to keep on complaining that the government is not doing it, not doing. Is let us rise up. That is the role of the representatives. Yes? That is the role. It's the representative of the youth in, in, in government. Okay, okay. wait, can we, can we also, just, can we but just. But also the constitution it? mandates you, if you fail, you can do that yourself. At the cost of five cents here on that. Oh, wait, 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 Baringo, can you hold on? It appears you attacked <laughs> the wrong one. <laughs> I'm not the president or even the, the deputy. <laughs> Maybe you can question that, you can question that to the rightful authority. Okay, yes. Dominic, okay. Dominic, can we please uh, hear from you? Thank you, my brother Akiele. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's saying that um, we have the we have a youth fund, we have a weather fund, and you soon bring the share fund, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I can say about these funds, they're just circulating between among the known people. These peop these funds, they are not going to the ground to the intended group. They are not going there. In fact, you find that. Somebody who is just, in fact, a, a leader running a, a given executive team, but he can take maybe form his own company, inform uses a youth to form a company, but in real sense is the person who want to gain. So we cannot say we cannot say that the youth have not gone for. We have gone for these funds. Nobody is there to listen to us. They just keep on postponing us, just wait, what, we are working on this, the, you, the funds are not there, they have not been brought. Those are, so, the thing is that... Dominic, I'm hearing a lot of corruption. You're talking about corruption. Exactly. That's, uh, corruption is everything. These funds for, for the youth, they are not coming to the intended groups. Like, for example, in my county, that's Kisi County, who has a fund for the youth or youth fund, it has never even uh, come out there's no giving information to the people, to the youth that uh, come for these funds, do this, we have this fund, it's for the youth. There's no that uh, basic education to the intended group. Okay. So even the youth, they even don't know what Uwezo fund is, what youth fund is. So that's why, and these people are running the funds. Well, Dominic, hold They're on, hold quiet. on. In their defense, the information is out there. So we cannot say that uh, there's no yes, information. Yes, yes. The information is out there. So let's, can we be fair to the uh, government uh, as well? But not all to right, all people. So, okay, so can you know, we, we are just within the urban area, but just go the ground. No, Dominic, can I'm we please? Like to say, yes. I challenge you to do that. You uh -huh. can do that. You are, you are exposed. You can go that. You can do that <coughs> to Kisi County. <coughs> And you try and, and try and eradicate this menace. Mm -hmm. And you try and educate the youth there that there is this fund. Oh, so that this. is your yes. job as a youth leader. Yeah, hands. You ah. can't. Yeah, you go with the funds. I think what? I get your point. Yeah, you go with the funds. Yeah. 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 Dominic, you're very crafty. All right, yeah. very naughty. Well, uh, allow me to also weigh in on that discussion, uh -huh. especially now that you mentioned youth fund. Uh -huh. uh, I think the start of a solution is acknowledging that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that the government hasn't done. We all know very well, I mean, factually, what the youth do is being exploited. And you do realize that as much as we have ways of... Personally, I tried applying for that thing. And I can assure you the bureaucracy in those offices, mm. you will cry. And you do remember some time back, people went with chains and locked the door. You remember? It when was, Ronald it was, me, was, it, it was me who led exactly. that. Okay. You, you, you are the one. You can check. You can check. <laughs> yeah. It was me who led yes. that. Uh -huh. I, I'm so happy of such a decision and a move. Mm -hmm. That tells you of the tiredness we are in. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so annoying if we can have 5% of the youth population getting money from bed. Imagine. Mm. It's so sudden. Mm. Mm. I think the government is not keen on implementing Article 55 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The government is not keen in implementing Article 100 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I think what the government is doing, they play too much lip service, yeah? And, and, and tell us how, 
how good the things we will give you at the campaign period. But once they get into those offices, all they do, they tell you, Sulikula kidogo wakati wakura. Sasa, wacha mimi ni kule. You know? And I think also the youth are to blame for this problem. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't stand up right now mm -hmm. and say we as the youth, mm -hmm. we are no longer going to eat that money of yeah. yours. Mm -hmm. What we want is deliverables. Yes. What are you going to bring? So I think it's time. I'm so happy I'm seated with youth leaders. Mm -hmm. It is time. Mm -hmm. In your own small spheres of influence, this is the message that we now want to start taking out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's no longer politics as usual. Mm -hmm. We call it politics unusual. Mm -hmm. The game is changing. Yes. Right now it's 2019, only three years to 2022. Let the narrative change. Yes. And it's us who are going to change that narrative. Okay, can I hear from, from Brad? Do you have something to say? Yeah, the youth leaders, I'm hearing uh, people saying that uh, the, uh, you, the information needs to reach home, yes? I'm hearing a lot of that. I'm hearing uh, uh, you echoed, Dominic, you had echoed uh, Baringo's sentiments <laughs> <laughs> that they are, you're being motivated but you're not being remunerated. So you don't feel the, the need to, to do anything about it. I heard that loud and clear. Okay, okay right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say that uh, I've been into conversations about uh, the, the funds, the Biashara funds. Mm -hmm. They wanted to bring in uh, the youth fund, uh, Wazo fund and all this. But up to now we have not been told uh, about uh, like what we reflected on the report about all this. And uh, we were told at uh, that function that uh, we should not think of unemployment as an issue but I think I differ. As the youth we need uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. We need jobs because we are learned and also we want to go far. So I think um, the government can provide us with uh, full information outside there mm -hmm. so that even if we are applying for jobs for these funds, we know because there is no full information. Mm -hmm. There is just limited information and that's where the problem starts. Yes. All right. In fact, actually, there's more statistics from G-Activate, and they said that uh, when it comes to devolution, because uh, the devolution concept was to bring the, the people closer to the government so that uh, there's not this big gap that people are experiencing when we had the national government previously. However, when the young people were asked um, if they knew the definition of, of, uh, of uh, devolution, 89% um, of them gave a very different thing, 11% gave a very different understanding. So there's an issue of information for sure. So can I have one of you comment on that? Has devolution assisted us when it comes to uh, making our leaders accountable? Asab, go ahead. Okay. Uh Hello again. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to take you back uh, a little bit it's okay. to comment or rebut on what uh, the referendum for that we allowed to talking about. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this is not the right time for us to talk of constitutional change because nine years is not enough, like it's so early mm -hmm. for us to talk of constitutional change. Mm -hmm. We must test the water first. Let's test the waters. Let's fit, try fit ourselves in, thi in this show because we are the one who chose or the one who voted for this constitutional change in 2010. So please, uh, that way, Alliance, you can just hold your uh, drafts for 2030 or 2032 for, for <laughs> us to test first these waters. Um, mm -hmm. On a uh, weather fund or what we call the government funding for youth, mm -hmm. I would like to comment that you see the government, uh, anything which is uh, public is a mess. I can say that. Because is, that, is that what? A mess. A mess. Yeah. Okay. Because if you want to accept some fund from the government, you must have a higher or a higher 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 hand, mm -hmm. upper hand for you to access it. Mm -hmm. You know that like we are all Kenyans, we mm -hmm. know these things. So uh, I cannot come from a, a small village mm -hmm. uh, with a dad uh, who is, a, a, let's say, a god herder mm -hmm. and access these funds. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the, the reality of the ground. This money will go to those people whom these leaders know them. Mm -hmm. So you will find some groups in the, uh, in the grounds which they call themselves youth groups, but they know directly to, uh, they are connected directly to the leaders. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can say is that 
the government can use Uwezo fund for this year. When it's a mess, then they change it to Biashara next year. <laughs> so to sound like it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, on what you said on devaluation, mm -hmm. uh, devaluation like it, uh, to me, I see it help a little bit, mm -hmm. but to some extent, it uh, extended corruption. Uh, you know this. It extended corruption. Corruption, yeah. Kevin, I really like yeah. to hear. There's these yes, people yeah. who used to like watch corruption on the, the, the uh, on TVs, like the governors. Uh, they had no chance to get there. But when <laughs> they were given these seats, they now access them mm -hmm. at large. So mm -hmm. like it extended corruption. Uh, that's what I can say. All right, all right. Um, uh, um, Wajir, Mohammed, sorry. <laughs> Mohammed. <laughs> Since revolution, we had the first Tamak road in Wajir. Uh -huh. uh, I, I knew you'd have a lot to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to Nairobi, it's only when you see the Tamak, the tamak road. Mm -hmm. We are saying uh, we, are, we are going to Kenya, but now <laughs> things are changing. But the, the, I think devolution has its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when we talk about uh, how has it affected the youth, mm -hmm. the impact of the youth. So like when you say youth, we have the ministry at the national level, Ministry of Youth and uh, Public Service. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you come to, to the county level, when you talk about devolution, you are told, Imam hey, Wajana, go and talk it at the national level. Oh my God. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Because mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they do not set some funds for the, for the youth. So I think that, that that's a very big problem. Like when you when you say like when you have a problem of uh, radicalization, the, the radicalization is mainly brought by high level of unemployment. The youth have nothing to do. That's why they join Al Shabab because most of the radicalized groups nowadays are university graduates. So why why will a university graduate join a radicalized group like Al Shabab? Because there is no jobs, there is no employment. And uh, there's no way. Mohammed, Mohammed, let me structures. let me cut you short somewhere. There, you had uh, when I was talking to you earlier, you had talked about how the residents are also to blame when it comes to holding the leaders accountable. Yes. What were you talking about? You know, the we are to blame for the problems that we have. This is because we have the clan system. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, when the when when we have elections, mm -hmm. we have the clan system whereby mm -hmm. you approach you are a clan, mm -hmm. you say, I want to buy. Mm -hmm. mm. Even that clan system is corrupt mm -hmm. because it's about money and influence. <laughs> so if you are a very young person, mm -hmm. uh, you have ideas, but you don't have money, mm -hmm. you're being told you are, you are, you are very young, uh, you respect the elders. So okay. that's the main problem. So that is what is stifling also young people from getting to positions of power. Yes. Kelvin, can you please respond before we move a further? Because I feel like now people are getting a bit excited. So can you please hear from me before we forget? Well, uh, in 2017, I contested for an MCA seat. Oh. Mm -hmm. But maybe what I learned most mm -hmm. is that for a youth to be in an elective post, mm -hmm. you must have money. A lot of it. Because even the youth themselves, they will never support you mm -hmm. without money. Mm -hmm. Because you have that mentality. So, I think the first change we should have, it's, have, it's on our own self, uh -huh. our own mindset. Uh -huh. If we can be able to revolution, revolutionize our mindset, uh -huh. then we can be able to change this country. Because we can't have the same narrative that talk to Kidogo. How do you expect this person you have elected uh -huh. to get money? Yeah. Basically, you, you, you're forcing him to steal so that he can be able to recover the money he spent on campaigns. That's the challenge that we have as a nation. Yes. Okay. On the issue of I can, I can give an example on, on the pros and cons of devolution. For instance, in Massabit, I interacted with some few MCS a while back, and they told me they have the county revolution fund. This fund is used by the youths in the county of Massabit. Why don't we challenge our governors? We have this fund. Or we challenge the Senate under uh, Article 96 that it's upon, now, it's upon time that we, have, we devolve this youth fund. Mm -hmm. yes, instead of it being at the national level, let's have it at the county level. So that it can, it, it, can, it can now be able to be accessed by everyone, even at the, at the smallest point in the village. Opio, yes. Asante Sana. Opio, yes. can we hear from you? Do you have anything to say about this issue of devolution? Has it <coughs> helped us? What do you have to say about uh, when it comes to electing young leaders? Oh, mm. people want us to have money. So uh, how do we get out with the old and in with the new? I think on, on devolution, mm. the devolution had got a good 
gesture or it was meant probably to, to, to have more money at the county levels, mm -hmm. money close to people. But I, I think as we speak in Kenya today, it is a recipe of, of corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, devolution is one of the, the key recipe of corruption as mm -hmm. we speak in this mm -hmm. country today. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, the problem that uh, maybe we are having as a country today that is making uh, devolution not even to work, uh, I think it is high time we even make uh, politics a less attractive venture. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. if, if we can have, because there is one time Auditor General gave a proposal that we need to have head of government and head of state. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. Let us make politics a, a less attractive venture because currently I'm sure all of you here, you people, all of us, we have political ambitions. Mm -hmm. But as youths as we speak now, it will be very difficult for you to clench a political seat in mm -hmm. this country today mm -hmm. because of the nature and the terrain of Kenyan politics. Mm -hmm. But if you go outside today, people will demand money. People will say like, oh, oh give us something small. So about, we are also about, to blame as a yes, population, yes, yes, not yes, only our population. leaders. Mm -hmm. All right, so can I, I need uh, two final comments. I need to add something, maybe. Uh, you need if, the microphone. <laughs> if I'm allowed to. Please, please, but I, I wanted that. Very, uh, very quickly. Yes. Uh, it's important. The other day, Justin Muturi, speak of the National Assembly, mm -hmm gave his suggestions when the BBI committee visited him. Mm -hmm. And he's suggesting in regards to devolution mm -hmm. that we no longer allow governors to vie for elected positions. Mm -hmm. What we do, uh, the parties with majority persons in the area nominate or rather present names. These names are taken to the Senate for vetting purposes and thereafter the president appoints these people. Okay. I think for us to achieve devolution, we need technocrats, not politicians. Okay. That is the route to go. Technocrats, that's what we need when it comes to development. Yes, can we have the final comments, please? please. Uh -huh. I think the young people haven't harnessed the potential of devolution, mm -hmm. given that um, a lot of young people focus on the presidency seat, yes. which they consider to be the most powerful. But I think the governor seat is more powerful. Yes. Because I always say that if if as young people we elect the right MCs, our MCs will put the governor accountable and this will help deliver services to the people. So I would say let us focus less on the presidency and more on the governor seat because even if we have a not so good president but you have good governors, mm. I'm sure yes. we will have more development at the ground. That is correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, Hilda. Then you'll finish allow, uh, allow me to take you to Kisi County. Uh -huh. We have the the CS mm -hmm. for Youth, Gender and Social Welfare. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Duke Mainga, alias Echate. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you this guy has brought a lot of changes in Kisi County. Wow. The stadium which was started in 1972, mm -hmm. it, had ne it, ha it has never had any structures, only the gates. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you go there right <laughs> now... Only the gates. Only the gate. <laughs> if you go right now there, mm -hmm. the, fi the field is good. Mm -hmm. We have a good uh, podiums. The f the ground is good. Everything is good. We have a wall. In fact, a powerful stadium. Mm -hmm. So that's under his leadership. Mm -hmm. He has also engulfed the youth mm -hmm. from uh, among um, the youths in our in in the county mm -hmm. from different sub counties. Mm -hmm. They have their leaders. Mm -hmm. They are uh, told uh, what to do. He organizes for maybe some welfare for them. So that one, that's something which is credible. We as the youth, we support those people, the youth who are in power, because they have done. Okay. Okay, can I take, please Dominic, one minute. Dominic, Dominic, yeah. we have, yeah. to, we have oh. to give everybody an opportunity. <laughs> but uh, because you have mentioned uh, a youth, a youth uh, who is working mm. and who has done something and has built a studio, don't you think we need to appreciate somebody like that? Cynthia, yes. yeah. let's clap for this man. Yes.